what's going on guys and i'm back today with another video and today i'm going to be going over a simple strategy that i trade so the main concepts that i'm going to be going over that are in this strategy are order blocks fibs imbalances breaker blocks time of day and trend this is all you need let me say that again this is all you need you don't need none of them trend lines you don't need support and resistance this is all you need this and candlesticks aka price is going to tell you everything you need to know so first let's start off with order blocks so with order blocks if you didn't watch my previous videos explaining them an order block is the last up or down candle before a move that breaks lows so for example right here this last down candle before this up candle that then pushed and broke these highs and then later these highs this will count as an order block right here this last down candle and this will be a bullish order block and depending on the time frame we're on a four hours so this would be a four hour bullish order block right here so that would be an order block i'm going to show you another example of a i want to show you a bearish order block now so the same thing this is a bullish order block since it's the last down candle before an up move a bearish order block would be the last up candle before a down move so this right here this candle last that up candle before the, these down ones that then came to try to break these lows down here this would be a bullish not bullish a bearish order block why because when price trades back into it you're going to expect a bearish move something just like this right here price retraced into it then started falling lower eventually it did come back up but short term this order block was respected now i'm going to show you another example real quick the last down candle before this up move that then went to take out these highs so it's basically the move that starts the break of structure that is what's happening right here it's broken and then these highs up here get broken but where did that whole move start it started right here because this is the last down candle before this up move and then if you take this this would be a bullish order block four hour what happened price came down created the order block took out these highs retraced back into it before pushing up even higher and this is going to lead me into my next concept which is going to be fibs so fibs is another confluence that i love to use and it works amazingly if you don't know what the fib does the fib isn't a magic tool but it's just measuring a percentage of a retracement so say you pull a fib from a low or a high so say you pull the fib from this low to this high let me fix this normal fib to this high it's basically giving you the percentages of where price could retrace. The FIB is just measuring the retracement. So if it falls to 38.20%, it retraced 38.20%. If it falls to lower to 62, it retraced 62%. And the same thing with the 70.50 and the 79. And the thing with this, these FIB levels that I use, the 38.20% is used as a continuation level. So when price is in a strong uptrend like this and retraces to this level, and respects it nine times out of ten is going to keep that bullish trend but also another thing you got to keep in mind is when price travels even lower to these levels the 62 to the 79 percent these are overbought levels just it's oversold level so it's giving you a good area to have your stop loss which would be under the 100 percent or below the 79 percent depending on the situation it's just giving you a good area to buy. So in a car, you don't want to buy a car for its most expensive price. You want to get the best price on it. So that's what the FIB's doing, doing for you. It's giving you the best price for you to then get into a trade. And I like to use this as a confirmation with these order blocks. So say, for example, now we're looking at right here in this example, price retrace, then pushed higher. But you need more confirmations. So what we would do is we would get our FIB draw it from this low to this high in this case the 38.20 percent wasn't respected but what was respected our overbought 
levels. So Price came into it and was in confluence with it. The R order block is also right at the 79% line. So right here is where Price rejected both, had a double confirmation before taking off. And mind you, what time is this too? This is around London session. I don't trade London session, I trade New York. But if you're a London session trader, this would have been a good trade you could have catched. I'm gonna find another example of a FIB working correctly right here. Price retraced to the 62%, came to this order block right here. That's another double confirmation, FIB plus order block, then broke structure. Started pushing and broke these highs. This to here. As you see what's happening right now, price is respecting the 79% and the 70.50. And how do I know that? Because these candles aren't closing under them. They're closing with wicks. And if you also look at what's going on, what is this right here? The last down candle before this up move. And if you look, that's where price came, respect it. Now it's respecting this FIB. So that's two confirmations. And if you also keep in mind that we're respecting trend so we're making higher highs and higher lows so we could also anticipate price is going to continue to move bullish why because we have two confirmations and we're going to go over our imbalances and imbalances are what you target yes you can use them as confirmations to get into trades but nine times out of ten i like to use them as targets and what is an imbalance let's take these three candles right here for example so what what's one thing you notice about these candles there's a gap in between them so between these three candles this wick this candles wick and this candles wick they don't touch so what is that doing so it's not giving equal equal opportunity to the buyers as it did to the sellers because the sellers had way more control in this scenario that's why we had such a big candle so when there's gaps in the market like this this creates imbalances fair value gaps or imbalances there's a lot of names that you can have for them but overall you know eventually you want to see price fill this area it could fill it and then start falling or it could just fill it and then keep going higher it all depends on what's going on at the market so if we just play price what happened look exactly how it did it it respects it fills this in respects it clearly and where did it take off from it took off all the way from this order block where this whole move started and what happened after that you got to look at what's happening at all times price went up started breaking highs but what did it leave here it left another order block in the market where price came respected respected the fib still so even if you didn't get in at this order block you still could have got in here there's a lot of ways you can get into trades and the thing with these order blocks and these fibs is on every time frame so I'm going to show you another example of imbalances being filled in the market. So for, say, for example, right here, these imbalances that got filled down here. So what, where's one right here from here to here, because this is a gap in the market. Where did price go to before going up right at this area? So yes, you can use them as confirmations to get into trades. I don't really like to use them. I'd rather use them as targets, but it's all any way works. Where's another imbalance? Right here would be an imbalance. And then what happened? Price eventually went to fill it. Again, where's another imbalance? Right up here. What happened? Price eventually came to fill it before falling down. Where's another imbalance? Right, right here. Price left an imbalance when it was going up. Then what happened? Price came, filled it in, respected it before pushing even higher. Like these are all things that happen every day and you could back test them. So I'm going to go into the next topic now of breaker blocks. So a breaker block is very similar to an order block, actually the same thing, but it's there's certain things that change. So say for example, right here, you see this, this is the last up candle before the down move that then took out these lows. So this is considered an order block and this would be a four hour bearish order block. So what you would have done, you would have been waiting for price to come back to this level to respect it to possibly keep falling. But a thing with a breaker block, a breaker block is when an order block is broken through and retested. And a clear example of that happening is right over here. Example of that happening is right here. This order block, the last up candle before this down move, create was, it was an order block. But what happened? Price ran through it. 
So price was not respecting this order block. Then what did it do? Price came back down to this order block, which is now a breaker block, respected it, and then started pushing higher. That's basically what the difference between a breaker block and an order block is. An order block is when it gets respected right here, the last up candle before the down move. What happened? This is an example of an order block being respected. Now I'm going to find another one of an order block not being respected and becoming a breaker block. The thing with breaker blocks is they, it doesn't happen as often as order blocks being respected, but when it does get respected, it tends to have nice moves. And the thing with order blocks, another thing, another tip, it tends to be in confluence with the 38.20% continuation level. This is all hindsight, but mind you, you guys could test this out yourself. Back test it and you'll see. So right here, this is an example of an order block being respected. Right here, it got respected a little bit, but then what happened? Price eventually just pushed through it. And then what happened when price pushed through it? It eventually had that retracement into this order block and then had that push. In this case, it then kept falling, but if you had a good stop loss, you could have been out that trade or break even. The last up candle before this down move created an order block. But then what happened? Price fell, pushed through it, breaking it, eventually falling back to it to then have that push. So that's an example of breaker block being respected. So if you understand the concepts of the order block and breaker block are the same thing, just a breaker block is when the order block is broken through. And the, one of the last key topics I'm going to be going over is time of day. Time of day is key. Time of day is when you're going to have the volume in the market. You can't be trading during an Asian session on a high volatile pair because it's going to move slow and you don't want to be in a consolidating market. You want to trade times that price is likely to have those pushes and have the volume spikes. And examples of those sessions are London session and New York session because those are the two most volatile sessions. And majority of the pairs that people trade, so like anything USD related, anything GBP, JPY, USD, all them pairs, the most volatile pairs and respected pairs, they tend to trade at those times. So New York session, which is 7 a.m. to 11 a.m. And then London session, 2 a.m. to 7 a.m. So whichever one you want to trade, and those are Eastern Standard Times. I don't know what times are for the other, other time zones, but that's the time zone that I trade in. So these are the times of day you want to trade. And majority of the trades are going to happen around those times. So look at this. What, what time does this happen? This is 6 in the morning. So this is New York session. 10 in the morning. This is where you get a lot of the volume. What time is this? 2 in the morning. This is London session. This whole move is London session. When, what time does this start? This move right here. 2 a.m. London session. And let me see. Look at all these times. Where are all the ranges? This is Asian session majority of the time. Look. Midnight. 10 o'clock. This is all Asian session. And then where? Right down here. Where was this? 10 in the morning where all the volume comes in. Like you can see. 10 in the morning. This is where all the volume comes in. What time is this? 2 in the morning, London session. It, you could just see the times that price is moving. And majority of the time, price is going to have these big moves around London and New York session. It's just what it is. You got to trade the times of day that are most important. You got to trade the times of day that are going to move with, and have a higher likelihood of going in your direction. Because if you're trading Asian session, you can get into a trade just like this and then end up consolidating for multiple hours mind you, this is on a four hour time frame so this right here this is just range how how long was this this was two days of ranging like you just got to trade the best times of day and what time was this 10 in the morning it had this most volume and as you can see that out of this whole consolidation the one biggest candle was at 10 in the morning that tells you something there's the most volume in the market at these times london session and new york session so trade those times and the last thing is trend trend is your friend but trend is one of the easiest concepts as simple as just looking where price is going that's just the easiest way i could tell you 
wherever you see price going overall in the higher time frames that is more than likely what the trend is in and until market structure gets broken so say for example this low this low these lows right here they're not breaking their lows they're staying above each other keeping it in that overall uptrend they're not breaking lows it's overall keeping that trend and then what happened price continued that uptrend but if look as soon as these lows were broken it went strongly past it that's why you just always got to look for trend but trend is the simplest concept you're gonna know because it's as simple as looking at where price is going and what it's doing if you see price is more than likely in this steady uptrend then it's in an uptrend if you see it like this where price was moving down this was in a temporary downtrend and so you would have been just shorting this whole time and it's just as simple as that trend you trade what you see i, I can't really go over trend because a five-year-old could tell you what trend this is and what do you see right now is overall going up what do you see over here is going up but it's not as steady as more consolidating is moving sideways it's not as strong anybody can see that this is the simplest thing what happened what was happening here uptrend what was going on here it was moving down downtrend it's as simple as that that's the simplest concept if you don't understand the concept of trend you're going to have bigger problems in trading and that's just what it is so these are the only concepts you need back test these concepts watch my videos on these concepts to get a better understanding and practice these concepts they work pretty damn well as you can see you can get trades from minimal to no drawdown depending on where your stop losses and entry is but order blocks fibs imbalances breaker blocks time of day and trend this is all you need for a strategy a confirmation strategy no indicators is raw price action what's happening with price and when is going to happen with price so now that i went over all of the concepts that i want you guys to understand and use for the strategy i'm going to put it all on one now so basically like anything else i do you always start from the higher time frame when you're doing an analysis and mind you this is a random point in the market just so i can show you me using all of these things that i've just taught you in confluence with each other in one strategy so we start on the higher time frame you figure out what the trend is and what do you see as of right now overall we've been moving bullish so we're gonna looks like we're gonna keep this bullish uptrend and why i think that because if you look at what's happening price is respecting its overall daily breaker block right here which is at 33500 which is an institutional level so that's two confirmations we already have prices overall came down grabbed the liquidity from these lows started respecting this 33500 level and also is at this order block so now we go down to the four hour time frame and we look at what's going on so now we're going to be looking for retracements to overall continue this uptrend so what we would do we would wait wait to see what's going to happen okay now look at this again we know that this area down here at 33500 i'm going to mark that up for us there we're going to put 33500 right here at this area is going to be respected and also what did we leave at that area before pushing up we left another order block right here and then what else are we going to do we're going to pull our fib from that low to this high so now we know that we have a lot of confirmations in these areas for price to possibly reject to continue going higher so what are we going to do we're going to wait for price to come down we're going to have say we're going to have our order right here at that order block targeting this high I'm going to show you more targets in a second but we just know what do we have right now for confirmation we have a fib long which is a bullish fib looking for buys plus a daily order block plus a four hour order block and mind you we're in an uptrend also so we have these confirmations we have a fib long daily order block four hour order block and we're over on an uptrend so now we're going to wait for price to come down lower to get in. We will get into the trade here. And then what happens? Price starts to respect it going up. So as of right now, we, we got into a little drawdown. But that's why the one thing I always teach you guys about order blocks is you always mitigate them. So with the 50%, you would have pulled from there to here. And you would have got the 50% of that order block. This is just for hindsight 
just showing you guys strategy so i just got in here but i personally would have waited for the 50 percent to get hit and as you can see it did get hit and then from here where are we targeting like we said i like to use my imbalances fair value guys whatever you want to call them as targets and in this case there is one right here so this would be one of our first targets and one of the areas that we would be breaking even at and then from here we have other imbalances in the market up here which we could also target and then after that we have another imbalance right above here and imbalances that are above highs tend to be the best ones because what do we know are above equal highs liquidity and what do we know which in imbalances liquidity so it's a double confirmation so now we have our imbalances as our targets we got our confirmations to enter the trade which was two order blocks the daily order block the four hour order block and we're over on an uptrend so we have four confirmations now with a target and then what happens price goes fills in both of these imbalances and mind you guys look at how this is 800 pips this is on us 30 but look to the drawdown we had to the pips we had a 200 pip stop loss for potential 850 or more return we would have been broke even once these targets at these first imbalances were hit but this is just hindsight so I, it's not really going to be the same that's why i like to do live trades but then from here what happens price goes even higher starting to fill in this imbalance up here before pushing up higher and filling in this full imbalance and then what happened right where price look how price respects it but this is just an example of me using all of the things that i taught to look for a trade and mind you time of day is important too but this was hindsight so i wasn't gonna use time of day but even looking this would have been london session moves i don't trade london session but if you do this is a move that could happen potentially at your time but these moves happen every day at these times london session and new york session this is just one example of many that i see day to day every week comment anything below i'll help you guys with anything any questions that you have comment any suggestions for videos that you want me to make i'm all ears and i'm open to helping you guys with anything you need make sure you click the link in the description for my free telegram group go over my trades every day and market analysis every day so if you want to get better on these smart money concepts, ICT concepts, institutional bank concepts, whatever you want to call them, just join there and I'll be happy to help. So that's it and I'll see you guys in the next video.